Hey guys, welcome back to the Pass Money Plan. My name is Alex. That's Kirby. Today we're going to be talking about can you retire off of Social Security, off of your 401k, any of these retirement plans that are set up, especially pensions uh, for normal day citizens. Is it still possible in this day and age to retire off of that? Now, Kirby, with your experience with speaking to more people, maybe in retirement, what are your thoughts on retiring on any of those three? Um, on any one of those three singularly, singularly, and the answer is quick. No, you can't. On one of just just Social Security. Now, of course, depending on how much money you made in your lifetime, we're speaking of the normal, average, you know, everyday person, you know, Social Security check, let's say it's 2000 a month. You know, I know it's less in other places. Georgia, Social Security, like $10 as a bubble gum. But, but, for, but for, let's just say you're retiring on $2,000 a month. I mean, rent alone. And let's, again, there's some places out there and you can hit the comment section if, you know, you can live on $2,000 a month in your state. But for m most of the states, you can't live off $2,000 a month. I mean, a one bedroom, a one bedroom apartment in Florida, unless you're in the hood hood or you out there in Redneckville, USA, a decent property close to amenities. Of course, if you want Social Security, you need to be close to amenities like grocery shopping, hospitals and stuff like that. You're going to spend upwards to twelve to fifteen hundred dollars a month. That's just on rent. Then, you know, if you need a car, transportation, you know, utilities, you know, food and all the other stuff and medication, 2000 bucks is uh, not going not going to cut the mustard. Now, if you, you know combine some of those like pension, which is going the way of the dodo bird. Uh, I mean, even the military has, you know, eradicated the pension plan for the people that, you know, just joined the military. But, well, the legacy retirement plan is not the same. But if you put those two together, so you got a pension. So let's say you got the $2,000 Social Security. And let's say you got another $2,000 pension. Now you're cooking with something. You're cooking with a little grease. That's $4,000 a month. And then that opened up more areas where you can be. And then now if you combine those, all three of them together, 401k pension and stuff like that. But again, Social Security pension is the, the main two corporate but the problem with the 401k is most people, if they're 100% dependent on that money, they didn't know how to manage money in the first place. So in the 401k, you know, following the 3% rule, following 3% rule, only taking out 3% of the money a year to, you know, pay for, I mean, 4% rule, taking out 4% of the money every year to pay expenses. Most people don't know, they don't have the aptitude or the discipline to do that. They're going to take out more money than they need or less money than they need. And then they're just going to blow through the money because they're not used to having money sitting there in their account. Everybody just think like the lottery. Oh, if I had all this money, I'll be fine. Well, if that was true, then all the lottery people wouldn't be, you know, going broke within, you know, three years, three to seven years. But. But so that 401k, so pension, social security, yeah, you got you got a fighting chance if you got both of those together. And you know, it's at the higher end. You got a fighting chance. But 401k and a social security, no. And this is the reason why most people, and Alex, you can attest to this. I mean, you talk to people also. The reason why the 401k is hard for people to retire on is because they really didn't put any money in when they was working. Most people, most people, that's their only investment vehicle that they have. And then what do they do? You know, they make 30, 40, 50, let's say 60, 80,000 dollars with, you know, a year within their career. They only put in the match. They only put in the match. So let's say, uh, do some quick math for me, Alex. Let's say, let's go at the upper end, 80,000 dollars, 80,000 dollars at Four percent, four percent of eighty thousand dollars is what? Thirty two hundred. Thirty two hundred. So they do a thirty two hundred. They do a thirty two hundred. 
Uh, and this again, people make eighty thousand dollars. Most people ain't making that, but thirty two hundred, thirty two hundred a year for let's say forty years. What's that? One hundred twenty eight thousand. One hundred twenty eight thousand. So let's give them a a four percent, a four percent, five percent, uh, year over year return. So they sit in roughly if they did it, if they did it perfectly, started making eighty thousand, ran through. So they sit in roughly at around seven hundred, almost a million dollars. Let's just say that seven hundred. $700. But the thing is, most people don't work perfectly. Most people don't start, 99% of people don't start off making $80,000 at the beginning of their career and push it all the way through. Most people take hardship loans, uh, hardship uh, withdrawals, taking money out. Like the most money ever taken out of 401k was in 2009, March 2009. They take the money out. They, they uh, you know, borrow money from it. They take hardship payments from it and things like that. So that money hasn't grown for the whole 40 years. But the people that's making less than that, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars and they took money out. I mean, I've talked to people, they've been working for years on years on years, and then they 401k is like $35 in it. You know, <laughs> like, you know, the most the most I've heard so far was somebody having money in their 401k, they had like about forty two thousand in it. And they're close to retirement age. So forty two thousand dollars won't even get them out of one year, let alone the next 30 years of retirement. So those are, you know, different things that's out there that's, you know, hindering people from hitting that retirement realm and living a life that everybody wanted. Oh, I just want to retire and travel. You can't even travel to the grocery store <laughs> using using uh, those little bit of funds. But go ahead. I'll let you run with it. No, it's absolutely true. And, um, you know, there's like I, I, I've come in contact with a few people um, where, you know, they're living off of just like Social Security. And, you know, if, if rent goes up for them, that's just like that's devastating. Like that's that's a matter of them having to go back to work. And so and same thing with the 401k. I, I know people that are close to retirement. They only have 20,000 in their in their account and because they've taken out hardship loans and stuff it's yeah it's it's very hard to it's impossible to retire off of 401k or um pension social security just one of them like like you said if you have all three then maybe you're doing good but um it's it's rare that you even see that or someone with that or someone that doesn't have some form of investment outside of that, that's actually retired good. Like someone who has four rental properties and then they have a pension or whatever, like, you know, but right. someone just retiring off of like what, you know, their, their jobs, retirement program and such, like you don't, you don't really see people retired off of that. And I mean, the most I've heard someone have in their 401k is like 300,000 and they're, they still got about 15 years of work left. So they'll probably have some, but I know we ran the numbers on that. And like, even if they had a million at retirement, is that going to last them the next 20, 30 years until they pass away on a million bucks, you know? And the, the key too is people, they're accustomed to living off of 80,000 a year. And then they go into retirement and then they have to live off of 40,000. Can they make that lifestyle change? They're used to traveling. They're used to going and doing whatever they want. Can they make that lifestyle change to literally just stay at home and have family visits? Like <laughs> up until the day you die. Is that really what they're capable of doing? And maybe it would be easier for someone in uh, who's completely debt free no house payment, no consumer debt, none of that, and living off of forty thousand a year from you know going from eighty thousand to half of that, maybe, but yeah, but both of those most of those people are few and far in between. I mean, right now in America, twenty five percent of the homes, twenty five percent of the homes in America, it's probably less than that now, are paid off. Right. Are paid off. So and it's not twenty five percent of the people have paid off houses, 25% of their homes. It's mostly 5% of the people have 25% of the paid off homes. So that's, 
you know, and I know we get comments in the comment section. Oh, my cousin Billy Ray, he did it. <laughs> he's one of he's one of 500 million people. But the majority, and that's what we're talking to here, majority of the people will not have it. Paid off home. I mean, unless you, you know, live somewhere in, you know, Arkansas. I'm not talking bad about Arkansas, but, you know, a cheaper home, you know, a cheaper locale where the uh, home prices are low. You know, you can get one for about, you know, 50, 60, you know, thousand or something like that back in the day. And then you paid it off. I mean, my grandmother, my grandmother have a house in Alabama that's paid off, you know. So I, I know it's possible. I know it's possible. But. Those days, those days are over with. And also my grandmother had a pension, social security, 401k, and paid off everything. And she could live. But again, it was a conjunction of all those together, not just, oh, one is going to be suffice. Right. And that's that's the thing people don't get. I mean, you I mean, people paying off homes, people instead of just refining for the lower interest rate back two years ago, they was lower interest rate and taking cash out, starting their cycle all over again. So when they get to that retirement age, they still got 20, 30 years still left on a still left on a property that's hindering them to retire because most people, the most people's biggest expense is where they live. That's just facts. That's that's just facts. So and so, like you said, the conjunction of having all those together and paid off house would take people a long way. That's a huge note. Sorry for cutting you off. No, you're good. No, it's absolutely true. It's it's a uh, you don't see many people that have all that going for them. Three forms of retirement income: paid off house, paid off consumer debt. That's not the average American. That would be the easiest way for a normal person to retire, but that's not the norm amongst all Americans. It's um, I mean, the statistics on how many Americans are actually poor and broke, especially coming closer to retirement is like unsettling. It's almost everybody, you know, and people just don't right. make the money. But uh, with all that being said, guys, if you have any comments or questions, let us know down below. Hit the like button, subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the next video.